this is uh, the third week that we're on this topic. I think it's going to be the last week. Uh, I think Pastor Josh has a plan to start a Christmas um, series next week. <clears throat> so prayer, as we know, is communication, right? And in order to have communication, you need from from party A to party B and from party B to party A. It's a back and forth. It's a two-way street. If you don't have a two-way street, that's not communication. If it's a one-way street, that's lecture. Amen? So we want, we want to have a two-way street with God. We want to be able to come to God with, with what we need, what we want. You know, the Word says that he'll give us the desires of our heart. It says that we can come boldly to the throne of grace, that we don't have to be shy to ask for things that we want. And he's going to answer those prayers, and we're going to talk a little bit more about that today. And prayer, the, another thing that we need to realize is that prayer is for all believers. It's not just for the pastor, all right? It's for all believers. And we can all, uh, we can all have answers to prayer. We can all pray powerfully because when we pray the word of God, when we pray the will of God, we're praying power. Because God's word is power, right? And God's word coming out of our mouth is just as powerful as God's word written in the, in the word of God. Amen? So when we speak that word, we're speaking power. When we're praying, we're praying with power. And we can pray with power and expectation. So this is for everybody. You know, uh, I, I, I shared this story with our, um, in chapel at Bible College a couple of weeks ago. And, you know, it has to do with answered prayer. You know, I'm not a pastor. I'm not super spiritual. Uh, I love God. I want to serve God, and, and I believe that there is a calling on my life to, to minister. Um, but it, I'm nothing special. So it was Halloween Day, and my five-year-old granddaughter, who lives with us, uh, and her mom, came into the kitchen, and she was crying. She was heartbroken. Five years old on Halloween Day. She was sick, and she couldn't go to school that day. And she was going to miss her Halloween party, and her little heart was broken. Well, Papa saw that, and Papa's heart was broken too, you know, because to a five-year-old kid, you know, dressing up and Halloween and candy, that's a big deal, and that's important to them, and they get excited about that. So, you know, I was in the kitchen getting my lunch together for, for that day, and they, they walked through, and the Spirit of God said, go in and lay hands on her. So I did. I went. I followed him into the living room. I called Peyton over. Peyton, come here, sweetie. So I, I, I put my hand on her and I prayed. You know, she had she had had a fever um, for a couple of days. Why it took so long, I don't know. But the Spirit of God told me to pray at that point, and there's a reason for that, I believe. So I, I put my hands on her and I prayed. You know, and I, I said, Lord, I know it's Your will that she be healed, and that sickness is not of You; it is the work of the devil. And Jesus spoke to a fever, and it left. So now, in the name of Jesus, fever, I tell you to leave. Right? I didn't see anything happen immediately. And I, I went off to work, and I checked in later on with my wife. I said, how's Peyton feeling? She said, her fever's gone. We spoke to the fever, and it left. That's the power of God. That's the power of faith. When we have the faith, and we speak God's word... We get results. If we don't have faith, we're not going to get results because we're not we're not uh, we're not uh, praying from a place of of authority. We're not praying from a place of confidence that we sh that we're supposed to have. If we pray from a place of unbelief and doubt, that nothing that's not going to get any further than you know how far as your voice can carry. With mine, it's not that far. So prayer is for all believers. Every one of you in this room who is a believer can get results when you pray with confidence, pray with faith, and pray the word of God. All right? Uh, prayer does not have to be big fancy words and in, in, in fancy language. All right? Now, if you've listened to Pastor Larissa pray, and I'm sure that everyone has, um, it's, it can be a little bit overwhelming at times because she it just seems to flow. It just seems to flow out of her. And then I kept thinking to myself, man, I wish I could pray like that. And I tried. And it didn't work. It just didn't, it just wasn't right because it wasn't coming from my heart. It was coming from my head. So something we need to remember when it comes time for prayer, when we pray, it needs to come from our heart. Because God looks on the heart. 
right? He doesn't care about fancy words. You're not going to impress him with all the spiritual words you can think of, you know, and, 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 but it's good to pray spiritual words. It's good to pray the word of God, um, but you're not going to impress him with, with, with fancy words. So prayer must come from your heart. Let's take a moment and pray. Father, would you, I thank you for this opportunity that you've given me. Father, use me as your vessel. Use me as your servant, Lord, that your message will get out today, that I'll speak with clarity, that I'll speak with boldness. Father, we just pray that the hearts and the minds of your people will be open and lives are going to be changed. Father, we thank you for the lives that are changed today, for the healings that are going to happen, for the salvations that are going to happen, for the for the new encouragement and boldness that we're going to have in prayer after today. Lord, we thank you for your blessings. In Jesus' name, amen. So, are we at Matthew 6 yet? Okay. Let's start in uh, verse 5. You know, this, this, there's a similar passage in Luke. And in Luke 11, um, the disciples said to Jesus, teach us how to pray. And so, te- so Jesus started teaching them. Um, now, this, this, this uh, passage of Scripture in Matthew 6 is part of the Sermon on the Mount where Jesus himself is speaking and teaching. Right? So let's pick up in verse 5. It says, And when you pray, you shall not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the corners of the streets, that they may be seen by men. So you get the holier, the holier than thou's, right? So the, the self-righteous ones. They want to be seen. They want people to see how holy they are and how spiritual they are. And they're out on the street corners and they're praying and they're pleading with God and they're glorifying. It's not worship. It's not praise. That is uh, self-indulgence self-indulgence. They're out there putting on a show because they want people to think how wonderful they are and how spiritual they are. That's why they're hypocrites because they're saying the words but they're not meaning them. Right? When we say words and we don't mean it, they're flat. They're empty. They're useless. Oh, that's good, Gary. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Um, So they may be seen of men. Assuredly, I say to you, they have their reward. Their reward is when people come up to them, oh, you're so spiritual, right? That's their reward. But you, when you pray, go into your room, and when you have shut the door, pray to your Father who is in the secret place. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you openly. When you pray, go into a secret place. Go off by yourself, all right? So you can be alone with God. Having a relationship with God, having fellowship with God, there's time for privacy with that, right? I mean, there's time to pray in corporate prayer like we do here, and that's very appropriate. But there's things that I can pray in my, in my personal life when it's just me and God that I'm not going to pray here, and it would not be appropriate to pray here. So your fellowship with God is, is personal. It's intimate, right? Now, when, when you're the bedroom is a private area. It's an intimate area. And you don't bring everybody and their brother into that into the bedroom for good reason, right? Because it's a private area. That's between you and your spouse. So when you pray, go to God, find a secret place, find a quiet place. If you live in my house, it's hard to find. Uh but then you can you can spend quality time with with God. You can enjoy fellowship with Him without interruption, and that's very very important. And when you pray, do not use vain repetitions as the heathen do. <laughs> You're not going to just say the same thing over and over and over and over again. It's okay to pray the same prayer. It's okay to pray for the same things. Regularly, in fact, it's biblical to do that. You know, to pray with perseverance, to pray with intensity. You know that uh, that, that God wants us to do that, and that's a way to pray. But when the, when praying with um, uh, vain repetitions is just words. 
It's just words that aren't going anywhere. And they think that you know, just because they say those words that things are going to happen and, and mountains are going to move and ground is going to shake. It goes back to, like, uh, remember the story with Elijah when he was on the mountain um, and he challenged the, all the prophets of Baal. And all the prophets of Baal were up there, right, and they're praying around their, around their, uh, around their sacrifice. And they're cutting themselves and they're chanting and they're doing this and they're doing that. Nothing happened. All right, that's vain repetition. For they think that they will be heard for their many words. Verse 8, therefore do not be like them, for your father knows the things you have needed of before you ask him. God knows what you need. He knows what you want. He knows the desires of your heart. He knows the hairs on your head. He, he knows how many there are. He counts the stars. I read this morning in, in, in our leader prayer, I shared Psalm 147, I think it was. He counts the stars and he calls them by name. God is so good. He loves us so much that he is invested in our lives. He cares about every little thing, the little things and the big things. God is so good. He knows what we need before we ask him, but he still wants us to ask him. Amen. Now, if you're a parent and you have small children, you know, and when you're two-year-old, when they're just learning to talk, you know, they come over and they do this. Eh, 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 right? Well, you know what they want, but what do you say? Use your words. Use your words. I want you to ask. Use your words. It's part of maturing. And it's part of communication. And it's part of growing. Because we knew what they needed. We knew what they wanted. But we still needed them to ask for it. And the same is true with God. He wants us to ask. In fact, he commands us to ask. We'll get to that later. Uh, in this manner, therefore, pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Verse 14. For if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men, their trespasses, neither will your father forgive your trespasses. Now, when I read this passage, I'm thinking about the, the Lord's Prayer, and it's a pretty common prayer. I mean, popular, I should say. A lot of people know it, and it's, it's used in a lot of churches. And uh, to pray the Lord's Prayer is, is, is not bad. It's not a bad thing to pray prayers that someone else wrote. Uh, I mean, we do it all the time, right? We do it with the Lord's Prayer. We do it with uh, Ephesians 1 prayer. Right, uh, and and it's it's biblical to do that, and that's and that's okay. So I was I got thinking about the Lord's Prayer, and then, you know some denominations they was like hold it right to the letter, and this is the way it has to be, and these are the exact words that we have to say in order to get any results from God, and that's not necessarily true. Jesus was teaching his disciples. Now, when you're teaching somebody, what are you doing? You're kind of giving them an outline. You're kind of giving them a blueprint. You're giving them a, a guide to go by. And that's what Jesus did here. He gave us a guide to go by. He put in the different elements of prayer that, uh, that we need in order to get results. And I want to go through those. We're going to go through line by line, if that's all right with you. Okay, good, we will. So, <clears throat> our Father in heaven. Our Father in heaven. Now, you remember, this, this was a radical statement because, you know, through the Old Testament, God was always feared, and he was the great judge, right? And people were afraid of him. They didn't have, you know, the personal relationship that we have today. They were, you know, they lived in fear because God was a judge, and he punished people, and, and uh, he was, I hate to say ruthless, but at times it looked like he might be ruthless. But God, God, uh, God was always love. He's always loved his people, um, but he was—he judged 
he judged people and he carried out that judgment at that time. Okay. Now in the Old Testament, uses the word father to describe God less than 14 times in the whole Old Testament. But the word father occurs 17 times in just the, just the Sermon on the Mount. So this was something new that Jesus was, was, uh, was teaching his, his disciples and teaching all the others that were there as well. So when you pray, address your heavenly father, your father who is in heaven. And that, that denotes the, the, uh, the intimate relationship that we have with God or the intimate relationship that we can have with God, the intimate relationship that he wants us to have with him. So uh, like earthly parent or uh, children can come to their father and ask for things. He wants us to come to him as our heavenly father. Hallowed be your name. Well, I'm getting ahead of myself. His intimate love for his children And our position as members of God's family is what signifies when we um, we address him as our father. In Galatians 4, uh, verses 4 to 7, it says, I won't have you turn there, but for time's sake, it says, But when the fullness of the time had come, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of as sons. And because you are sons, God has set forth the spirit of of his son into your hearts, crying out, Abba, Father. Therefore, you are no longer a slave, but a son. And if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. So when we accept Christ as our Savior, we're no longer a slave, right? We sing that song, no longer a slave to sin, but we're a child of God. And right there, the word of God says it, that we are sons of the Most High. We are sons of God, and we can call him Abba, Father. And we know that um, in the Greek, Abba means daddy. And that's an intimate term. Whenever my daughter, even now she's, how old is she? 29. She'll call me daddy. It still melts my heart. I don't know why. Because it's nice to hear. It's intimate. It's loving. It's precious. Hallowed be your name. Hallowed. That's a word we don't use all the time. Um, It's an old English word. It means to be sanctified or praised. And we'll talk more about that in a little while. Your kingdom come refers to both God's spiritual reign in the lives of the individuals and his coming rule over all creation. So in Luke 17, uh, it refers to the spiritual reign of the individual. Uh, 17 and verse 20, it says, Now when he was asked by the Pharisees when the kingdom of God would come, he answered and said, So Jesus, talking to the Pharisees, says, The kingdom of God does not come by observation. What's observation? Seeing. You're not going to see the kingdom of God. Nor will they say, see here or see there. For indeed, the kingdom of God is within you. The kingdom of God is within you. It's within me. When we have Jesus in our heart, when we have the Holy Ghost indwelling in us, we are the kingdom of God. <laughs> Glory to God. That's exciting right there. Let's, oh, that's awesome. We are the kingdom of God. It also refers to when, God, when Jesus comes back. All right, He was already referring to the second coming. You know, He hadn't even left yet for the first time, and he's already talking about the second coming. So when he comes back, uh, what glory it will be. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We are to pray according to God's will. How do we know what God's will is? Read your Bible. (laughs) Read your Bible. Learn the character of God. All right? Um, God's will, for instance, is not that we suffer. God's will is not that we be sick. God's will is not that we be poor. God's will is not that we be depressed. Right? That's not God's will. So if those things are happening, that's not God's will. So we know that the opposite of those things are going to be true. Right? That God wants us to be prosperous. 
right? So if we pray over our finances, that's, that's biblical. God wants us to be healthy. We can lay hands on people and they will recover. Jesus said it, right? We'll raise people from the dead. Huh? Now that's a feat right there. <laughs> Glory to God. Glory to God. So we, when we pray according to God's will, that's going to have power. We pray through his word. And we can also pray through prayer. Huh. Pray through prayer. Now that's, that's a bold statement. Well, as you pray, the more you pray, the closer you're going to get to God. The, the nearer he's going to be to you, the nearer you're going to be to him. And when you're praying properly, when you're praying in a communication mode, right, goes back and forth, he's going to talk to you. Now, you're not probably not going to hear an audible voice. It could happen, but probably won't. But you're going to have a sense of knowing. You're going to have a sense of knowing in your spirit when the Holy Spirit is speaking to you, when God is speaking to you, and that can come through prayer. So when we pray, we're not just rattling off, oh, gimme, 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 gimme. We're like, oh, we take time to be quiet. We're in our quiet place. We're in our secret place. We take time to be quiet, and we take time to listen and to search, to search our, 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 uh, our, our, our heart, to search our soul, to search our spirit, because the, the, the spirit, the Holy Spirit will interact with our spirit, and that's how we're going to know, and that's how we're going to hear God's voice. So in 1 John 5, 14, to, to illustrate this, it says, Now this is the confidence that we have in him. This is the confidence that we have in him. That if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we have asked of him. That sounds a lot, lot, a lot like Mark eleven twenty four, doesn't it? When you pray, believe. When you pray, right? Pastor Josh preached about that. Brother Devin preached about that uh, Monday night. Um, and it was powerful. And the more you, the more I hear about it. You know, Brother Hagen, Kenneth Hagen, and I'm sure a lot of you know who he is, he, uh, who he was. He's a, uh, he was a prophet. He was an evangelist. He was a teacher. He was a pastor. Um, and God used him in, in great ways, in mighty ways. And God came to him in visions. And one of the visions, he, he told Brother Hagen to teach my people faith. So it's, it's almost like a joke. I shouldn't say it's almost like a joke, but... Mark 11, 23 and 24 were his go-to, his go-to verses. That was his signature uh, message. And anytime you listen to him, I've listened to him quite a bit. It's almost every sermon he, that he preaches, Mark 11, 23 and 24 come in there. <laughs> and for a while, I'm like, again, really? Don't you know anything else? <clears throat> but it started... The Lord started to stir in my heart, and I started to listen with more intent. And you know, every time I hear it, I might hear the same sermon, re, on, re, you know, recorded the same exact sermon, three, four different times, we'll get something different out of it every time. And that's the beauty of God's Word, is you can't study it too much. You can't get too much revelation. Because <laughs> <laughs> the more you study it, the more revelation you're going to have. The more revelation you have, the, the more alive the Word becomes. The more alive the Word becomes, the more excited you get about the Word and about reading it and about, about doing it and about your relationship with God and how good He is and how powerful He is and merciful and gracious. So the more you pray, it's like a cycle. It's like a self-feeding cycle. The more you pray... The closer you get to God, the more you pray, the closer you get to God. The more you pray, the closer you get, you get to God. The closer you get to God. The more powerful your prayers become. The stronger your faith becomes. Because without faith, what? It's impossible to please God. And through Jesus' ministry, we know that he had a great healing ministry, right? And when people were healed, what did he say more times than not? He says, your faith has made you whole. Right? Your faith has made you well. So we need faith or we need that confidence that we have in him, 
that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. God is so good. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Give us this day our daily bread. This indicates that we need to depend on God for everything. We have a total daily dependence on God. He wants us to live by faith because faith pleases him, right? So when we're living by faith, we're pleasing God. Mm. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. This is actually explained in verse 14. Let's go back to verse 14. It says, For if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you don't forgive men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. So if you're not right with other people, you got something going on with somebody else, you're holding a grudge against them, God's not going to forgive you if you won't forgive them. Right? I remember the, 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 the parable of the, uh, of, of the servant came, owed, owed the, uh, his master like a whole bunch of money, like millions of dollars or something. And uh, he didn't have the money. And he came to his master and he begged and he, and he pleaded and he asked for, for forgiveness. He asked forgiveness of the debt. And his master was merciful. And his master forgave him the debt. So he left his master's chambers, and he's walking down, and he sees a friend of his, or acquaintance, or somebody, that owed him money, maybe like 10 bucks, not a lot. And he goes over to that person and says, hey, I want, your I want you to, you need to pay me back my money right now. Oh, but brother, I don't have the money right now. Can you forgive me the loan? No. And he called the authorities on him and had him locked up. Now, that's not showing grace, is it? So then when the, when the master found out about that, it ticked him right off. He says, how in the world do you get off not forgiving him his debt when I forgave you your debt, which was much greater? And then he throws him in the clink. God will forgive us when we forgive others. If we're not willing to forgive others, he's not going to forgive us. It's so important. Unforgiveness is one of the hindrances to answered prayer. Right? Known sin is a hindrance to answered prayer. If we have known sin in our lives, we're not going to get the results from prayer that we expect because of that sin. We need to be right with God. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Temptation could be translated trial, or test. It says we should pray for God's protection when we're attacked by the devil. God's people must live in the power of God's strength. I wasn't going to, but you know, I think we're going to. Let's turn to John 17. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. <laughs> ah, I'm laughing. I'm laughing at my wife last night. I'm working on my sermon. <laughs> well, actually, I'm laughing at my wife laughing at me. How's that? I'm working on my sermon. And she looks over at me with those eyes. You know the look that your spouse gives you, you know? She looks at me, and I said, what? She says, you only have 40 minutes, you know. <laughs> yeah, I know. Well, we're on page two of eight, and I got five minutes left. <laughs> God is so good. John 17, let's start. Where are we going to start? Let's start in verse six. Let's start in verse 6. This is a prayer that Jesus prayed for his disciples. All right? This is how Jesus prayed. He says, I have manifested your name to the men whom you have given me out of the world. They are yours. You gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they have known that all things which you have given me are from you. For I have given to them the words which you have given me, and they have received them, and have known surely that I came forth from you. And they have believed 
that you sent me. I pray for them. I do not pray for the world, but for those whom you have given me, for they are yours, and all mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I am glorified in them. Now I am no longer in the world, but these are in the world, and I come to you, Holy Father. Keep through your name those whom you have given me, that they may be one as we are. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in your name. Those whom you gave me I have kept, and none of them is lost except the son of perdition, that the scripture might be fulfilled. But now I come to you, and these things I speak in the world, that they may have my joy fulfilled in themselves. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them because they are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. I do not pray that you should take them out of the world, but that you should keep them from the evil one. Jesus is praying for his disciples that God would protect them. Protect them from the evil. The evil people that are around them, protect them from the devil. Mm, and keep them close, keep them in, in the palm of God's hand. They are not of the world just as I am not of the world. Sanctify them with your truth. Set them apart by your truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me in the world, I also have sent them into the world. And for their sakes I sanctify myself that they may also be sanctified by the truth. Now, when I was reading that, I could just hear these words coming out of Jesus' mouth with love and compassion and intensity, right? And that's how we're, that's how we're supposed to pray, with intensity, right? The word says that the, effect, the uh, effectual fervent, fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much, right? Fervent is intense prayer. We are to be intense. When it comes from our heart, we can't help but be intense, right? When you remember when you, the first time you, you had that puppy love crush and, oh, you just love that person so much that your heart hurt? <laughs> That's what it's like. That's what it's like when you have that intensity and you have that, uh, that fervency when we pray from our heart. God is so good, and that's what he wants from us. He wants us to be honest. He wants us to be pure. He wants us to be fervent. He wants us to persevere. Now, earlier I talked about <clears throat> vain repetitions. Perseverance is not vain repetitions. Perseverance is just keep on keeping on. Yeah. All right? And, we, and God wants us to do that. Because I think a lot of it really is because he wants to make sure that we know that that's what we need or that we know that's what we want. How many of us have a, see something on a whim and say, boy, I'd really like to have that? And you're like, you know, all excited about that for, I don't know, three days, and then you kind of, eh, you lose interest in it, right? Yeah. That's not perseverance, and that's not a desire of your heart. If, a desire, if it is a desire of your heart, you're not going to give up on that. Right? You're not going to give up on that. It's like every week we pray from, from up here that we pray for the lost, we pray for this church, we pray for the communities. Right? That's not vain repetition. That's coming from our heart because we're not giving up on that. We're not giving up on the people in this community. We're not giving up on the people in this region. We are going to see them come to Christ. And we persevere in our prayer for that end. Yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. You know, with that, that we acknowledge that everything is his. We acknowledge his sovereignty. We acknowledge his awesome power and the way that he controls everything that he has made. Praise God. Praise God. All right, we'll have a 10-minute intermission, and then we'll continue with part two. No, I'm only kidding. Can you give me 10 minutes? I didn't even get to Thanksgiving. <clears throat> There's several different types of prayer. 
And there's several different elements in each prayer that we should have. One of them is supplication, which is asking, right? One of them is uh, agreement. You know, we have the prayer of agreement when we're here as a body, right? And someone's leading and we're, we're, we're releasing our faith towards whatever the, the leader is praying about. The corporate prayer is a prayer of agreement. All right. There's also a prayer of thanksgiving and praise. Thanksgiving and praise is when we're not asking for anything, we're not demanding anything, we're not uh, interceding for someone else that can't pray for themselves. We're just focusing on God. We're focusing on God and how wonderful he is and how great he is and how marvelous he is and what he's done and who he is and we're worshiping the character of God and, and praising the character of God and the, the praise God and, and worship God in prayer is powerful. It's powerful. Praise and worship is a powerful tool. God is pleased by praise and worship. In the, uh, in the Old Testament, um, in uh, Chronicles, Second Chronicles, right, it's King Jehoshaphat was facing this, this army, right? He had like four different armies surrounding him. It was going to be a big battle. And the Lord said to him, don't worry about it. Have no fear because I am with you. This is your battle. I have won the battle for you, right? So he told Jehoshaphat, line up your army and go. But before he did that, what did they do? They picked out people who were going to praise and worship and sing. All right? So they took the, band, they took the army band praising God and glorifying God and put them in the front. So the praisers were leading the army. And while they were praising God and praying, God set up ambushes and all the other armies killed themselves and each other. Praise and worship is powerful. It pleases God. It moves God when we praise him and we worship him. Because he wants us to do that. Not that it butters him up. Not that he needs it for his ego. But he's deserving. He is deserving of our praise. He's deserving of our worship. And when we pray, we need to do that. We need to acknowledge that he is worthy. Yeah. What is praise? Praise exalts God. It glorifies him. It declares his majesty, his power, his love, his mercy, his grace, and his glory. It reveres God. We express our love for him, our gratitude to him, our subjection under him. It's honest. It's pure. It's from the heart. And when we're worshiping and when we're praising, sometimes there's tears coming down our face. Not because we're hurting, but because we're glorifying him. And we're doing it fervently. We're doing it with intensity. We're doing it with passion. And we're doing it deliberately. We don't pray when we feel like it. We do pray when we feel like it, but we pray when we don't feel like it too. Because if you prayed whenever you felt like it, you probably wouldn't pray much. Guilty. It's happened. It's happened to me. If I don't consciously take time to pray, I don't. Or I don't pray like I should. You know? Um, you don't spend that time. You know, when you're, when you're uh, I'm going to throw out an old word, when you're courting someone... All right. <clears throat> when you all are dating, you spend time with each other. How much of a relationship do you think you would have if you spent 30 seconds a day? Not much. So as we pray, as we spend time in prayer, communing with God, fellowshipping with God, we're going to be drawn to him. We're going to be drawn to him. I ask him for a hunger and a thirst after righteousness. I ask him for that. I ask him for a love for people. Sometimes you don't love people so much. <laughs> Not like you should. You know, the Bible says that if any man lacks wisdom, let him ask. And God will give it liberally. So if we lack love, we can ask for that, right? And he'll give it liberally. If he hunger and a thirst for righteousness. And I can tell you that My prayer life has been changed since I've been preparing for this lesson today. Because when I'm preaching to you, I preach to myself mostly. Because we're all in the same boat. We all have flesh. 
We all have weakness. And at 5 o'clock in the morning, 5.30 in the morning, the flesh is pretty strong. At 9 o'clock in the morning, your spirit wakes up <laughs> and says, what's wrong with you? Paul said that he put his flesh under. This is an example of having to put your flesh under. Make time to pray even when you don't feel like it. And when you don't feel like it, praise. You can praise yourself into the spirit. You can praise yourself happy. <laughs> God is so good. You can praise yourself happy. If you have trouble uh, wondering, how, well, how do I praise? How do I praise? How can I learn how to praise God? What do I say? Well, there's a couple of things. Number one, just say what's in your heart. All right? This is between you and God. No one else is listening. You're not writing a book or you're not writing some kind of pop song. You're, 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 you're speaking to God and you're telling him your heart. You're telling him the way you feel. He already knows that anyway, but he wants you to express it so that you know that you know that. All right? So when you're expressing it, you're praising. Have it come from your heart. It doesn't have to be fancy. The more you do it, the better you're going to get at it. The more confidence you're going to have in it. Okay? Um, you know, another thing you can do is start reading the, the book of Psalms. Start reading the book of Psalms because they, the Psalms are just packed full of praise, packed full of worship, right? And in and, and, and ways, flowery ways to praise God. But it's more than flowery words. It's more than nice phrases. It's more than poetry. It's words of passion. It's words of uh, fervency. Psalm 69, 30 and 31 says, I will praise the name of God with a song and will magnify him with thanksgiving. This also shall please the Lord better than an ox or a bull. He would rather... You worship him, he would rather you praise him than a sacrifice to him. Hmm? He inhabits our praises. Psalm 147. Praise the Lord for it's good to sing praises to our God. It's good to sing praises to our God. Thank you, Lord, I praise your name. Right? You can be worshiping, driving down the road. And you're just singing songs. You're just singing whatever comes to your heart. Sometimes it sounds good. Sometimes it don't. Sometimes, sometimes. Oh man, I'm really killing this today. I like. I got four four lines in a row. They all rhymed and everything. It kind of made sense. But you know, God doesn't care about that. This is not an audition. This is not a talent show. This is you expressing your love for Him. And every believer can do that. When you truly are appreciative, when you truly love God, you can do that. You can speak from your heart. We need to get or we need to develop an attitude of gratitude. When we develop our attitude of gratitude, it's going to come out naturally that we're going to praise and worship God. and We're going to thank him for everything that he's done, everything that he's doing, everything he's going to do. We just had Thanksgiving, and then Thanksgiving is one of my favorite holidays because I just love to eat. And uh, it, it's, a, it's a great time. It's a time of family. It's a time of, of, of reflection. I hope we all reflected uh, on what we're thankful for, and we, and we praised God for that. And we thanked God for that because that's, that's important. Otherwise, we're just a bunch of ingrates. We're a bunch of brats. Yeah, we're children of God, right? And when you have a child and that child is not appreciative of what you've done, as a parent, you're like, really? I sacrificed so you can have that and you don't even appreciate it? How do you think God feels about us? He sent his son to die for us so that we could have eternal life. And sometimes we don't appreciate that. We don't appreciate it enough. Tell God every day that you love him. The more you tell him, the more you're going to love him. I seek, I seek more and more of God every day. I want to love him more and more every day. I said, I said something last week, 
at, at our chapel is to, it kind of challenged the people. Is that you, do you love the Lord with all your heart and all your might and all your soul like God wants you to? I'm not sure that I do. And then when I said that, I knew what I meant, but it might have come out wrong. <laughs> you know, it might have been misconstrued. We can always love God more. And we can always strive to be closer to him. And we should be striving to be closer to him and striving to love him more. And if we can love him more, then we don't love him enough now. Amen? God is so good. Matthew, Matthew 7, I'll close with this. It says, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be open to you. For everyone who asks receives and he who seeks finds. And to him who knocks, it will be opened. I mentioned that perseverance is important in prayer. In this, in this passage, the verbs ask, seek, and knock are in present tense, which would indicate keep on doing that. Ask and keep on asking. Seek and keep on seeking. Knock and keep on knocking. When you're persistent, when, you're, when you persevere in prayer, you're going to get results. When you don't give up, you're going to get results. That's how God works. So pray often, pray with intensity, pray with perseverance, pray with an attitude of gratitude, and pray with praise and thanksgiving. Yeah. Amen. Father, we thank you. We praise your name. We lift it high because you're worthy to be praised. You are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. You are the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. You were here at the very beginning. You created all the universe, and your sovereignty keeps it going day after day. You've set up each... Uh, ecosystem to complement another ecosystem. Lord, you set up this environment in a, in, a, in a precious, precious balance that only you could form. Oh, Lord, we thank you and we praise you for that. We lift up your name. The name above all names is the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus, the great and wonderful name, the, the beautiful name of Jesus, the powerful name of Jesus. And by your blood, we are righteous. We are righteousness according to God through the blood of Jesus, and we thank you for that. We thank you, Father, for, for loving us. You loved us. We love you because you first loved us. You loved us before we were born. You count the hairs on our head. Oh, Father, you have a plan for each and every one of us. You have a perfect plan for each and every one of us, a plan that you set up before we were born, a plan for the rest of our lives that's going to be perfect harmony with your will, a plan for our lives, Lord, that's going to give us joy and peace. <laughs> oh, Lord, praise your name. Praise your name. You're worthy to be praised. You're worthy to be praised, and we worship you now. We worship you now. We praise your name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You brought us together. You clothe us. You feed us. You love us. You're faithful to us, even when we're not faithful to you. You're always there. Your arms are wide open, waiting for us to come back when we slide away. You're always willing to forgive and forget. <laughs> Glory to God. Father, we just thank you for that. Your love knows no end. Your mercies are new every day. Your grace abounds. Your grace abounds on us. Lord, we worship you. You are a God. You are a master. You are a savior. You're our father. We come to you as sons and daughters. We thank you for the authority that you have given us through the blood of Jesus. We thank you for the place that you have given us because of Jesus, that we sit at the right hand of God, that we're joint heirs with Christ, <laughs> that we can come boldly to the throne of grace, that we can make our requests known, that you want to give good gifts to your children. Father, we thank you for that. We praise you for that. We worship you for that. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Mm, now, with your, with your head bowed, your eyes closed, you know, we never want to leave a service without giving you the opportunity to come to Jesus.
the opportunity to turn your life back over to Christ. Perhaps you've slipped away and the, the Holy Spirit has worked in you today and worked uh, through me. Praise God. It's not me. It's all him. Thank you, Lord. But the, ur- the Spirit is urging you now. Now is the time. Now is the time, he says. Today is the day that, that you need to get right with God. Today is the day that you need to let go of that unforgiveness that you've been harboring. Today is the day that you want to meet Jesus for the first time. Thank you, Lord. You can pray a prayer right where you're sitting. It can go something like this. Maybe we'll all, we'll all repeat it anyway. My Father who is in heaven, glory to you and praise. I thank you, Lord, for your majesty, for your Son, for your love. Right now I confess that Jesus is Lord. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Change my life. I accept your gift of eternal life right now. In Jesus' name, amen.